Welcome. Thank you for spending some of your time with us today as we provide for you a high-level overview of our CRM for oil and gas product and take a look inside this industry-specific solution. My name is Jean Degner, the Account Manager for our CRM for oil and gas customers here at Ledgeview Partners, a business and technology consulting company where we focus on transforming business one relationship at a time. And we do this by partnering with organizations to transform sales, marketing, and customer service operations and processes that are supported by core technologies, including customer relationship management and marketing automation, and as doing that as a Microsoft Dynamics Gold Partner and Salesforce Silver Partner. We do have a lot to cover today, but before I do introduce our presenter, I do have a couple of quick housekeeping items to cover. First, I want to mention that today's webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand after the live session. All attendees will receive a follow-up email this week with a link to access the presentation on demand. We do encourage you to share this with others in your company and network. To ensure the best audio quality, uh, we do have everyone on listen-only mode, but if you do have a question, please submit those in the question pane of your GoToWebinar control panel. We have a really full agenda today, but if we do have time at the end of the presentation, we will field as many questions as possible. But if we do not get to your question, we will follow up after the webinar. Now let me introduce our presenter for today. Steve Rybrack is a CRM product consultant and managing consultant with Ledgeview Partners and knows how lubricant and fuel marketers use CRM better than anyone I have ever met. Steve manages all of our CRM for oil and gas impl implementations and uh, gets to know each and every lubricant and fuel marketer very, very well. From coast to coast, he ensures that the CRM our customers implemented and expected is what is delivered. Through his years of experience, he is also the expert on how oil and gas distributors can gain the most efficiency and sales productivity through technology like CRM. And today, Steve is going to show you how that's done. Steve, thank you for joining us today. All right, thanks, Jean. As you mentioned, we have lots to cover, so I'm gonna fly through some slides and then get right into our CRM product so we can spend most of the time actually showing stuff. So a quick look at uh, our agenda. We're just gonna briefly talk about CRM and why you might need it, some of the steps involved with selecting a CRM, some of the best practices and some of the gotchas we've uncovered, and then again, the biggest thing is all the things you can do with a CRM. So, uh, CRM 101, we've got lots of stuff to cover in less than an hour, so let's rock and roll. So CRM, as I'm sure most of you know, it's software. It really focuses on sales, marketing, and service, really managing your pipeline and your current book of business, your prospects. All that comes with basic CRM. Um, everything pretty much tries to revolve right around the customer. What you're gonna see today is some of the out of the box functionality, but really our focus uh, today is gonna be showing you all of the customization, if you will, that we put on top of vanilla CRM. So you're gonna be looking at a finished product, something that when, if and when you decide to go with the solution, we don't need a developer at all. We can just uh, configure this thing and get you up and running with all of the bells and whistles. So why might you need a CRM? Uh, biggest thing, uh, get access to information anytime, anywhere. I'm not gonna read this whole list to you because I'm sure most of you have done some research and you probably understand why you might need a CRM. Probably the two biggest things that I notice the most are this concept of creating transparency. So transparency, what I mean by that is just getting data available and really by data, I mean information available for everyone to see. Then they can just be that much more productive. Then you throw a system at them to, to see that data and that is just gonna apply some consistent processes. So what you end up seeing is transparency and consistency just adds to efficiency, which then obviously relates to more sales, more profit, all that kind of good stuff. So again, lots of, lots of bullets here. You can read these at your leisure, um, but lots of reasons why you might need a CRM and we recognize that every day with, with uh, customers that we deal with. 
This is just kind of another way to look at, at CRM and another reason why you might want it. You know, if you have access to all this information, it's going to help you answer all of these questions. Right, so that's what we want to do. You know, how can I analyze my customers? What's in my pipeline? Who am I competing with? Right, we want to get that all in one easy to use system for you. All right, next slide really talks about selecting a CRM. So most folks are really analyzing software or CRM vendors, right? I'm looking at Microsoft's Dynamics 365 solution or Salesforce or ACT or on and on and on. And then they pick the one that's best for them. And then they either have somebody internally or they deal with a consulting company to help design and implement any customizations that they might want. So we kind of call that starting with vanilla. You know, the benefit to that is you can, you're going to get exactly what you want. Maybe some of the negatives, I, I think it's going to cost you more. And there's a lot of time commitment involved. So there's a lot of time you need to spend and a lot of time with your, with your vendor or in your internal IT department. As opposed to what I'll call an industry ready solution or a finished product. That's usually less expensive, a lot less time committed. You can go live much sooner. Probably the one slight disadvantage is you might not get every single thing you want, right? You might only get 98 or 99% of what you want because the product is done. This is how it works. And this is what we're going to show today. What we've done over the last seven, eight years is work with clients just like you um, and use our industry knowledge as well to build this system. So it's got eight years of feedback and growth. So hopefully it's a, a by now it's a very robust product and we'll be able to uh, continue to evolve and, and make it grow. All right, one other thing I would point out here, because we've seen this fail many times, is a lot of folks fail with CRM. They, they think they can just buy it and kind of get it up and running. I would just recommend that you try not to do this completely alone. I mean, get at least some, some feedback from somebody, uh, preferably somebody with your industry knowledge is like your biggest, your biggest benefit. But, but uh, there are people out there who have, seen how other companies have gotten burned, and you might as well take advantage of that knowledge. So try not to do it alone. These are just some things that you'll see in our finished solution. I'm not going to read every of these bullets to you, but this is a lot of things that we, uh, we've added to our system. You'll see things like suggestive cell, territory planning. I'll go through a list uh, shortly here of what I'm going to cover today. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time on navigation talk about a key thing with our system with data integration. We want to be able to get data from your accounting system into CRM. So I'm going to touch on that quite a bit. And then also this concept of data visualization, turning your data into information, letting you interact with your data, you know, analyzing charts, dashboards, reports, um, just just on and on and on. This, this is where I'm going to spend probably almost half of our presentation today. Um, moving on. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time about leads, accounts, contacts, and opportunities, just to make sure you're well aware that the system has that. We don't spend a ton of time on it, but um, just want to make sure you're, you, you see it so you know that it's part of the solution. We'll talk about this thing called estimated days between orders, just a way to let the system tell you if you possibly lost a customer. Suggestive sell feature, a way for you to maybe grow, uh, get more business out of your existing customers, way to track competitor information. Um, we'll go through an opportunity and make sure you see the sales process, how you advance an opportunity through the process, and we'll take a quick look at a quote feature that we have. Then as we kind of wrap up, we'll talk about things like goal setting and comparing goals to your actuals, and then using a tool we call gap to goal analysis to see how close you are to hitting your goals. Let's let the system do all the work for you so you can just analyze that information and help you make better business decisions. So if you're a, if you're a goal-driven organization, you are going to love, I think, the capabilities we have here. Spend a little bit of time on activities and notes. Very uh, nice feature with most CRM systems. Uh, we'll talk about equipment tracking. A lot of our customers have a lot of tanks and other equipment out there that they really don't have a good handle on, so I can show you how you can use our CRM to do that. Spend just a little bit of time talking about a fuel price notification module that we have, the way to send out your fuel prices each day very easily. Um, territory management, how you can kind of map your accounts uh, geographically. 
And then we'll touch on another little product that we're, uh, uh, it's a little, um, it's uh, not quite as mature as the product that we have, but we are starting to work on a product for folks who are in the retail fuels business because a lot of our folks, a lot of our current customers actually do that. So uh, we've gotten feedback to, hey, we should, we should add that feature. All right. So now let's uh, roll up our sleeves and take a look inside. So let's kind of flip over to CRM and see what we can cover. So a little bit on navigation is where I promised I would start. So I'm just gonna get a little bit organized here. All right, so what you're gonna see me do today is spend a lot of time up in this little black bar. This bar is very helpful with CRM. It helps you get to where you wanna go and it also tells you where you're at. So right now I'm in Dynamics 365, I'm in sales and I'm in accounts. These little arrows are very powerful. If I click this little arrow next to sales, it shows me the main modules within the system. And then from here, I can drill down even further into more specific items. So I can do that. Um, once I get to where I want to be, if I go to sales, I could go over to leads. You see how it changes the navigation. So that's just uh, just so you know, as I'm flying around here today, you know what I'm actually doing. So this, this bar here really becomes your friend. So let's talk about data integration and, and, and this information that could come from your accounting system and how hopefully we're gonna bring it to life for users of CRM. So I'm gonna go into accounts first. We'll just start there. A Couple different ways I could have done this. I could have did a global search. In this case, I just went to a list of accounts and I'm just gonna go over here to search my account file. And I tend to use this account quite a bit because it has some data in here. So I just, I'm gonna click on that account and open it up. And just to show you that this is connected to our back office, you'll see a lot of the fields on here are locked and there's an account number filled in. This is a customer of ours. This is not a prospect anymore. If this was a prospect, I could pretty much change whatever I wanted to. But once it becomes a customer, I'm a big believer in one version of the truth and your accounting system is the source of that truth. So we have integration with your back office. So information about this customer, the account number, their name, the industry they're in, phone number information, address information, that should all just mirror your accounting system. So people aren't questioning which one's right. They're both the same. Um, so that's, that's pretty much if you just think about account information and there's more on here than just you know name and address and whatnot there's credit rating information credit limits payment terms and there's more information that you can bring over from your accounting system so the other thing that we bring over is what I, what we call order history but think of it as your invoice data so one of the things we're able to do with your invoice data is things like as i scroll down on the screen there's a nice rolling 12 month product summary. So this is gonna summarize for the last 12 months, all the products this customer bought, and it's gonna sort it and show me the product they bought the most of down to the product they bought the least of. So again, these are 12 month numbers. How much did they buy? How much revenue did it produce? How much gross profit did it produce? What was my profit per unit? In this case, it's gallons. And when's the last time this customer ordered each of these products? So a really nice snapshot of what this customer is all about. If you wanted the detail behind this, just two clicks away, I talked about this navigation bar. Click on this little arrow here and I can go right to order history. And this is gonna show me every line item, basically it's every product line item on every invoice for this customer. So here's the most recent one. So it shows me things like order date, order ID, which is usually an invoice number, what product line or product segment did they buy? What specific product did they buy? How much did they pay? And on and on and on. So pretty nice feature. Um, no question as to what they've been buying and how much have they been buying and when's the last time they bought. It's all right here, just a couple clicks away. The other thing, if I jump back to the kind of the main form here, is we've got some dashboards. I'll just show you one that you know, I'm showing you a lot of numbers. Some folks are a little bit more graphical. So just real quickly, I'll go to the, what we call the order history dashboard. And what this is gonna do is give you an opportunity to analyze either gross profit, revenue, or volume units. And it's gonna give me some information based on my fiscal year and the most recent 12 months versus the prior 12 months. And it looks like my data 
is uh, I don't have a couple years worth of data, so it looks like they're almost the same numbers. And then we break that down by product segment, which you might think of it as your product lines. Um, so you group your products together, and then we can show you how the customer is doing period over period based on a group of products, which again, we group them together in something called product segment. All right, going back to the main form here. Another thing I'm, uh, that we do uh, optionally is if you have notes on your accounting system, so maybe your credit department takes really good notes when they talk to customers. If you want those notes brought over into CRM, they show up right down on the bottom of the screen in the notes section. And here's where, you know, this note could have come from my accounting system. The fact that uh, maybe somebody in credit called Jim and he said the check's in the mail. Um, you can also just manually add notes to this list as well. So that's, a, that's another feature of CRM. One of the nice benefits about notes is this is where you could actually attach a document. So if maybe you wanted to store your credit apps or your lease agreements or Oh, just about if you did an ROI calculation before you decided to go with this customer and you're using like a spreadsheet for that, right? You could you could just save that in CRM under a note and now it's all in one place. That's what we want. It's not hid someplace else. I pull up the account and I have it all right here in front of me. All right, the last thing I think I'll point out as far as data integration from the account level is if you set up special pricing, which a lot of our customers set up pricing at the product level for each customer. So if you have that data and you send it over to CRM, it's part of our integration process, I can just click on this little arrow again, and what I wanna do is look at that account product prices. So basically what this is gonna show me is if this customer was gonna buy something today, um, these are all the products that we have set up in our accounting system and the price that they would, they would pay if they bought it today. So if you change their special price tonight, or today, tomorrow, it would be refreshed here. So it's just a nice, easy way to know, you know how much a customer would be paying for something. All right, so that's more at the account level stuff. So we also have stuff at the product level. That's another file that we bring over. So I'm just gonna navigate over to products for a minute. And part of our data integration is gonna be able to get your products over into CRM. So I'm just gonna search for one that I know has some, some good data here. Let's see if I can find one like this. All right, so I'm just gonna open up a product and you'll see things like, uh, you know, the product name, the ID, how you sell it, you know, you sell it by the drum. And then you, you code your products based on how you want them grouped. So what product segment and, and there's optionally a product category so we can run reports based on that information. Another thing, if you sell it by the drum, if you sold two drums, right, we, we try to get things down to a standard unit of measure. So we have this quantity multiplier you can put in here. So two drums would turn into 110 gallons. The other thing I want to point out, besides just basic product information, is some of our customers want to know how much product they have on hand at each warehouse. So that's in your accounting system. Again, if we don't have to go there to fumble through to try to figure that out, you pull up the product in CRM, you saw how easy that was. Two clicks away, there's one. Uh, I just have to look for product balances, there it is. Click two, and now this is just gonna show me all my locations and whatever information your accounting system has, you can send over based on this, because we tried to come up with all of the different possibilities, so how much is on hand, how much is on order from a supplier, how much does the customer have on order, and on and on down to like, okay, what's available. If your system only keeps track of like how much you have on hand, well, these would all could all just be zero. Doesn't matter. So just a nice way to be able to see how much product you have on hand at each of your locations. All right, I think that's a uh, that's a pretty good overview of data integration. So we want to bring that information from your accounting system over to CRM, make it easy for people to use to get quick uh, information to make quick decisions. So now let's talk about data visualization. Right? How can I bring this data to life in charts and reports and whatnot? So I'll start out with some dashboards and this doesn't necessarily have to be data from your accounting system here, right? This applies to not only the data from your accounting system that we're bringing to life, but also 
data that you enter into CRM. So one of the big things with, with uh, CRM is, is pipeline or opportunity management. So we have lots of dashboards and charts that analyze your pipeline. So I'm just gonna jump into dashboards here for a minute and we will go through a few of the charts and what, they, what we have. I'm not gonna go through every one because one of the things that you'll notice is we have, I think we have about a dozen dashboards just on opportunities. And I think last time I counted, it was almost 60 different charts. You're not gonna use all of them, right? There's gonna be the ones that are important to you for you to manage your business. Those are the ones you'll just gravitate to. So I just started out with one that's kind of simple. Um, and it's really just to look at how many opportunities do I have in the system? So how many open opportunities are in my pipeline? And the first little chart is showing me how many opportunities I still have open by the month that they were created. So this is just kind of a quick way to look to see if you have any that are getting kind of old. Why aren't they moving? Because um, right, if you have an opportunity from three, four years ago, maybe it's time to, you know, close it out and, and move on. So what else is this showing me? Uh, the next chart is how many open opportunities do I have in each department? So one of the configuration settings that our system has is the ability for you to create departments. So a lot of our customers do more than just lubricants. Some of them do lubricants and fuel. Some of them just do fuel. Some of them just do lubricants. Some of them have a service department, maybe uh, an equipment department. Um, so we don't care. Um, we'll configure the system. We try to get it to match your business. So we want CRM to look and feel how you function, how you talk. So the next chart over here is how many open opportunities does each person have? So it's kind of nice if you kind of expect your team to have 15, 20 opportunities going on at once, right? You're a little bit behind, right? Some of the folks are a little bit, a little bit laxing. They got to build up their pipeline. All right, so enough on this one. There's, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm not gonna go through every single one of these here, but here's just kind of looking back at the last 12 months, looking at how many you won and how many opportunities you lost by month, by department, and again, by person. So just graphical representation of all of your pipeline data. Let's take a look at another one real quick here. Uh, we'll just analyze volume for a minute. So now I'm not talking about how many opportunities. I'm talking about how much volume is in my pipeline by department, by person, and by that famous sales stage. This is what people mostly think of when they think of their, their pipeline. You know, top of the funnel is kind of what's early on in the sales process. And when you get down to the bottom of the pipeline, that's the stuff that, you know, you're just about ready to close. So the one thing I'd like to point out at this point is almost all of our charts, you can drill in or interact with the data. You know, charts are great and all, but maybe I'm wondering, I have almost 200,000 gallons, you know, we're ready to close on. They're in this activate and transition stage. You know, what are those and, and whose are they? Well, just if I click this button here, what's kind of nice is it puts the data next to the chart. So now here I sit with uh, a list of opportunities. It looks like across our organization, we have 52 opportunities. And this is just a graphical representation of this data. And what's kind of nice now, another click away, I can just click on what I care about and it'll narrow the list from 52 down to the 14 that are in that activate and transition stage. Now maybe that's even just a little bit too much data to scroll through. So you can make a chart of just these 14 records. So I could say maybe, oh, let's just say, show me that by owner, which would be like your salesperson. And pretty much what it does is it takes this data and says, okay, show me the volume by each person. And I could say, well, geez, Taylor's got like 55,000 gallons going on. I wonder how many opportunities he has. What's that one all about? I can click on that and it just narrows down the list. So it looks like he just put in a little test opportunity here. So I could have drilled on Steve. I could have drilled on anybody. So a simple way, just a couple of clicks to interact with the data. Right, just a quick couple more. Uh, dashboards or charts on opportunities. We've got some trending analysis for you. So you can kind of look back at the last 12 months on you know, how much volume did you close, looking forward the next three months, what does your pipeline look like? How many opportunities have an estimated close date each of the next three months? And then 
how much volume is in each stage of the pipeline. So it looks like we've got a lot going to be happening here in June. And then looking back again, just basically on created dates. So how many opportunities did I create each month over the last 12 months? And what was the estimated volume? So it just kind of helps you, you know, just analyze your data, kind of give you a pulse of what's, what's coming up, how it's been going, you know, looking backwards. So we'd like you to look both ways. And again, I could interact with this data just by clicking this. I would get the data that drives this chart and I could filter it. I could drill into it and do whatever I wanted to, just like I did earlier. Okay, one other thing I'll show you just real quick uh, to kind of keep an eye on your pipeline, your data, just to see how clean you think it is. One of the things that's real important to any uh, pipeline system or opportunity system is, is the estimated close date, right? When do I think I'm gonna close this deal? Well, this chart is showing me how many opportunities I have with an estimated close date that's in the past. So obviously these are just not good, right? You're not gonna close something a few months ago, right? It should be closing stuff in the future. So you'd want this chart to be blank. Here's another one just to kind of give you an idea how many opportunities haven't been updated in at least 30 days. And I've got some that haven't been updated for a couple months. So why? We're obviously, you know, is our data clean, right? If these charts are pretty clean, then I'd say your data is pretty clean. How many opportunities have been stuck in a stage for over 45 days? So anyway, I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but just another way to keep an eye on your data. All right. Uh, what else might we want to look at? Um, how about a couple of reports, just to show you how we can run some reports. So we looked at uh, dashboards and charts. Let's look at reports. So I'm just going to run a ranking report real quick. So I want to rank my customers from my best customer down to my worst customer. Something that I think just about any system should have. It should be pretty easy. I'm going to skip this screen for a minute. I'll come back to it. I'm just going to go run the report gonna ask me one question how do I want to rank my customers and I'll just say by volume I go to run report it analyzes all my customers it's gonna give me a list of those customers and it's gonna rank it's gonna analyzing all the volume now for all of our customers and it's gonna show me the customer who bought the most from me based on volume going down to the customer who bought the least from me so again a list of customers ranked by volume we also show the the percentage that they've contributed. We also have a running percentages because a lot of folks want to see maybe the top 80 or 90 percent. Um, so we're going to show you 100 percent, but you can, um, you know, just stop reading maybe when you get down to 80 or 70 percent, whatever you care about. So one of the powers of, of the system is the ability to let you choose the data that you want the report to use. So you know, this report's nice, but maybe you're looking at it going, wow, we do fuel and we do lubricants and the fuel data just totally distorts this. So, hey, that's what this first screen was that I skipped. You can basically filter on any data that's in your account file, which is like your customer file, or what we called earlier your order history or your invoice file. So the order history file has dates in it, so you can pick a time period you want. It just defaults to this fiscal year, but I could I could pick any date range I wanted. I could pick any year I wanted. We also have things at the at the order history level, like the product the customer bought, the department that got credit for the sale, the product segment that was involved. So I could easily just go in here and say, look, I only care about lubricant stuff. So I I'm I pick the data. And then I let the system use the data I care about to run the report. So I go and I'm gonna run the same report. Now I said it by volume, but the only thing different is I said, I don't want my fuel data. Well, I get a completely different looking list of customers now and gallons are, are way down because we probably sell tons of fuel, but not a lot of lubricants. So I can see my top lubricant customers. I could run the same report for like a salesperson. I could run it for an industry. Um, so you pick, you pick the filter, we'll run the report for you. So what, what I find is we have, let me just close this out. I think we're up to like 30, 32 reports. What I tend to find is people kind of gravitate to the three or four that they use the most. And based on that filter, they can pretty much get whatever they want. 
So that's one report. Another report that's kind of popular is uh, analyzing your products. So I know I don't have a lot of order history data out there for each month, but I think you'll get the idea here. So maybe I want to analyze the products for a given account, and I'll just use that Fairview Manufacturing as an example. So I could, again, I could filter on whatever I want. I'm just going to do it for like one customer. I could do this for a salesman. I could do this for an industry. Again, I could filter on whatever I want. And I go to run this report. It's going to ask me, do I want gross profit, revenue, or volume? I'll just stick with volume. And I, I'll just say I want to go through the end of April. I'm just going to go to view this report. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a list of products and show me how much volume this customer bought of each product for each of the last 13 months with a nice total going across here and then totals on the bottom for each month. And you can see I pounded in a lot of data for this account in January. So either they were a really good account and then I lost them or this is obviously just some test data. So this is kind of a nice report, bringing your data to life for you, helping you analyze your products. Kind of looking at the clock here, I'm uh, probably just a couple minutes behind. So I'll just do two more products or two more reports real quick because uh, there's a lot of them. So don't think I'm showing you everything. There's a lot of reports that compare this year to last year. You can actually pick the time periods, customer variances, product variances. I'll jump to, uh, hey, how's my sales team doing? So real quick, I'll just skip this filter screen. I know it's going to ask me some questions because it's a, it's a growth report. So I'll do something like, how did we do from May of 16 through April of 17? And I want to compare that through May of 17 through April of 18. And I want to look at all my data. I could look at new business or share wall of business and I could pick a department here. I'll just pick all just to make this quick. And I'm just going to view the report. Now this is scrunching two years worth of data and it's going to give me a really short report because it's a salesperson report. One line per salesperson comparing two time periods. So I can just kind of show you what the report is. So it's each, each of your salespeople. How did they do in the prior period for gross profit, the current period, and then did they go up or down? And then for what percentage did they go up or down? And then the same thing for volume. So sky's the limit on all the filters and all the selections you can pick. So that's kind of a nice report. Last one I'll show you, super speed mode here. Sorry, I'm going so fast. A um, lot of folks have reached out to us looking for ways to help grow their existing business. So we have a report based on feedback from our customers. When you design and configure the system, we've learned that when you set up your product segments or your product groups, that there's a relationship between them. Um, so as an example, um, I'll just totally make this up. If your customer buys if customers who buy antifreeze typically buy our industrial oil and vice versa. If they buy industrial oil, they usually buy antifreeze. So wouldn't it be nice to run a report to show you folks who are buying one or the other and do kind of a comparison to that? So that's what this report does. It's a, it's a list of customers. I pick a range of dates. I'll just stick with this and uh, see that's, that's a year worth. I should get, I should get something here and I'll do just that. I'll compare. These are my product segments. I'll compare antifreeze to our industrial line and I'll compare it in volume. And basically what I'm saying is show me a list of all my customers in that time period who bought something of either of those two product lines. And now I get the list of customers and it shows how much antifreeze they bought, how much industrial oil they bought and a variance. And what's kind of nice is I can just, I can just sort it by this variance. So here's the customers who bought a lot of industrial oil and no antifreeze. Well, if there's a relationship there, you know, here's a list of customers who maybe you have some potential business to go after. I flip the, the sorting here and I get kind of just the opposite. Hey, they're buying a lot of our, oh, I'm sorry, antifreeze and they didn't buy any industrial oil. Um, maybe I could go after some of these customers. So very easy tool to help you grow your business. All right. So that's, a little bit on data visualization. There's more, but uh, we only allocated an hour for today. So I did promise I was going to spend most of my time on data integration and data visualization. So that's why I used up quite a bit of the of the webinar just for this. 
All right, we are gonna move on, just touch briefly um, on leads, accounts, contacts, and opportunities. I just wanna show you this, that yes, we do have a whole area where you can enter leads, and then you, you either disqualify or qualify a lead, and then that lead could potentially then, if you qualified, it turns into a, an, an account, um, which is a prospect account. And ultimately, you just work that prospect account and the opportunity against that um, account. And then also, there's contact information that's tied to the account. So we do have leads. I'll just jump back to that Fairview Manufacturing um, account. This time, I'll use Global Search to find Fairview Manufacturing. Oops, if I could spell it right. This is global search is kind of nice. I can just search no matter where I'm at. I go up to this navigation bar and I can just say, hey, I want to find Fairview. So as I scroll down, I kind of blew by this uh, earlier. You'll see things like a section for contacts. So I can easily add and remove contacts from Fairview Manufacturing. I can just add them. We don't have any data integration for this because typically uh, contacts in your accounting system are really not the contacts that your sales team cares about in most cases. So this is just basically maintained in CRM. So I have accounts, contacts, um, I have opportunities. I have that one opportunity right now I'm working for, for Fairview Manufacturing. So I just wanted to cover that just to make sure, you know, we're all on the same page that we knew we had that. So looking at this account, one of the things I mentioned earlier is we have a way to help you kind of keep an eye, let the system keep an eye on the system for you. So you might have dozens and dozens of accounts that you're in charge of. Each account might buy and different time have different time patterns for when they buy from you. Some might order once a day, some might order once a week, some might order once a month, right? So you can analyze your accounts. So let's say I analyze Fairview Manufacturing. I looked at their order history. I know a lot about them. They, they typically order every, let's say, three weeks. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can say, look, if they ever go more than 23 days without placing an order, I, I would wanna be aware of that because there's a good chance something's going on. So again, I, I do this for each account that I care about. And so each account could have a different number. And then what you'd wanna do is uh, maybe once, twice a week, you're, hopefully you're in CRM you know, every day anyway. So just take a minute on you know, Monday and Thursday or whatever and flip over into the dashboard area and let the system do all the work for you. Now take a look at all of the data and tell me if I have any accounts that uh, are in trouble. So when you go over to the workplace area into that looks like I'm still in dashboards, um, I can go to this dashboard that says, show me all of my accounts that are beyond their estimated days between orders. And guess what? Here's that Fairview Manufacturing. They typically order every 20, you know, I, I want it to be alerted if they went beyond 23 days. They're 86 days beyond that. So they've obviously showed up on this chart, this dashboard, um, for the last 86 days. So I have been a poor job, you know, reaching out to them to find out what's going on. I've probably lost this account by now. So really nice feature to help you uh, let the system help you. Um, so another thing that I wanted to show you um, is this concept of suggestive sell. And it's kind of like that one report that I, that I showed you um, where you could compare two product segments. That was more um, kind of looking at your whole database. This is really if I'm analyzing a customer. Um, that, uh, so I'm looking at this customer, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just about to call them, um, or I'm wondering if there's any possible opportunities for them. One of the things that you can do is you can set up this little matrix, so it's just a little table, that that matches up your product segments, and maybe I should just uh, maybe I should just show you that real quick. I'm just going to jump over to settings because you just do this once; it probably take you uh, probably take you less than less than an hour. Um, basically, you make a list of product segments. So, if a customer buys antifreeze, they usually buy our additives. If they buy antifreeze, they usually buy our grease, right? If they buy from our automotive line, they usually buy grease. So, it's basically just a just a mapping, just you know how how do your product segments relate to each other? And then the beauty of all that is when you're looking at an account, like in this case, I was looking at Fairview Manufacturing. We've got this little button just below the navigation bar called Suggestive Cell. 
And if I click that, what it does is it looks at all the product lines Fairview Manufacturing is buying. It looks at all the product segments they're not buying. Then it looks at that matrix that you set up. It says, based on all of your data, you might want to talk to them about your additive line and your automotive line. And it looks like we also give you a way to kind of enter some dates and some, some notes. So it looks like somebody talked to them about automotive stuff already. And, and the little comment here is that they're under contract. And then basically there's a little snooze date. So probably don't want to bring that up again until at least July of 2020. So kind of a cool feature. doesn't take much to set it up and can really help you as you're analyzing your customers. All right, so that's suggestive sell. How do I keep track of my competitors? Um, so we have this thing called uh, competitor share of wallet. So what are your customers or prospects buying from other folks, right, that you want them to buy from you? So as I scroll down on Fairview Manufacturing, there's a section down here um, that's showing me this share of wallet information. So here's Fairview. Looks like they're buying their grease and their antifreeze from a couple of our competitors. And about here's much, here's how much that is. If I found out that they're buying their uh, industrial oil from somebody else, I could just go up here to this add share of wallet competitor. And it just asks me a couple questions. So department, what department are we talking? Let's say lubricants. What product segment are we talking about? Oh, I found out they're buying their industrial stuff from somebody else. They're buying it from... Let's say, uh, you know, ABC company. I'll just leave ABC oil. And if I had that business, that might be this much revenue, this much gross profit, and I'm talking, you know, this many gallons. Pick a number. If I thought I could go after that business at this point, I could just check this box and it would even create an opportunity for me. But if there's no opportunity at this time, I can just say add competitor and it just adds it to the bottom of that screen. So now, I, I don't have to remember this, right? I have all this competitor, competitor share wallet information right here. So this is of little value the day I enter it. It's of value when I'm calling on Fairview, Mac, Fairview Manufacturing again down the road. It's also of value if ABC Oil Company gets acquired by somebody else, goes out of business, loses half of their sales team, whatever would happen that could create an opportunity for you. So let's say something happened to one of these competitors, right? We also have a dashboard that might help you out here. So you could go to dashboards. Uh, I'm gonna go to dashboard, I believe it's dashboard three. We've got some charts on here that kind of show gross profit, revenue and volume by competitor. Remember how you could kind of drill into data? So I could say, well, show me the data behind this chart. And if something maybe happened to ABC Oil Company, here's a list of all the information that I've been recording for our customers or prospects who buy from ABC Oil Company. Well, here's 20 possible, very good opportunities for you right now, right? I would talk, get my sales team together, create some opportunities based on this data and go after it while the getting is good. So that's the way our customers use um, competitor share a wallet. All right, I've got to pick up the pace here even faster. Um, I did want to spend a minute at least to show you an opportunity because I, I showed you some of the dashboards on it, but just real quickly, um, I'll just go into, uh, I'll just link to that one right off of uh, that Fairview account because I think I had that one up real easy. Oops. So I'll just pull up Fairview real quick. I just want to show you what an opportunity looks like. I mean, I showed you a lot of the data that's behind the scenes, but um, on some of the charts, but let's just link right to an opportunity. And we do have a sales process or stages you advance it through. So you start out in kind of the early on stage and then you move it to when you start meeting with the customer, you're in needs and solutions. And then when you're kind of preparing your quote and about to make a presentation, you advance it to the presentation stage and when the customer says, yes, I'll do business with you, you, you know, you move it to the activate and transition. And then when typically when their credit app gets processed and maybe they place their first order, you, you close this as a win. Anywhere along the way, you could close this as lost if you lost a deal. And there's information you can tie to the opportunity, like what department is it for? What brand are you pushing? What, what's the opportunity type? 
Um, and then, you know, descriptions, who you're competing with for this business. And then probably the most important stuff is right here. You know, how big of an opportunity is it? Do I have any comments as to where this opportunity is at? And then the all famous estimated close date. So this is what your team really, you know, has to update periodically to make sure, you know, what they know about this opportunity is, is reflected in CRM to make those dashboards and that transparency come to life. Uh, the other thing that I promised uh, I would show is uh, a quote. So we do have a quote feature. I'd say a fair amount of our customers actually tap into it. Typically, you're working an opportunity. You want to generate a quote. So I'm just going to pull up one here um, that I've got all filled in already. And our quotes are very data-driven. So you fill in information about, about the, the quote, if you will. Oops. Uh, let me just try that again. I was playing with this one earlier. Okay, so here's this quote. Um, again, I fill in some basic information. A lot of it comes right from the opportunity, um, but I can have a little comment line here, but ultimately it's a list of products and prices. And when I'm all done entering it, I just didn't want to spend a lot of time entering it for you today. I just go run a report. And what it does, it takes all of that data and it creates a report that you could actually print. You could export it to a PDF and print it or email it to the customer. What would happen is your logo would print here. Optionally, you can pick if you want for each quote, you can decide if you want any other logo to appear on here. So you can pick and choose whatever you want. This could be any any logo or no logo. And then it's you know all about the customer, all about the salesperson, and then basically just a list of products and prices. More notes, little disclaimer, and away you go. So that's quotes. All right, I'm trying to get back caught up on time because I've got a whole nother section to cover here. All right. Goal setting, goal versus actual, gap to goal. What do I want to cover there? Um, you set goals. We've got a spreadsheet you fill out with all your goals. And then just to show you how easy it is to import those goals, you, you save that spreadsheet as a CSV file. You go, here to the, you go here to this upload wizard. Basically, just enter the, the first day of the fiscal year that you want to load the goals for. And then you search for your file and hit next. And if the date is good, it gets loaded into the system. Okay, check. So where does that data show up? Um, guess what? Over on some dashboards and on some reports. I'll just show you a couple dashboards real quick. Um, I'll start out at more of a corporate level. So at a corporate level, you can analyze goal versus actual for gross profit or volume. I think I'll, I think I'll just look at volume. I've been doing that pretty much all day. So you always get this blue bar. This is your actual. This is going to come from your accounting system. The circles are your quarterly goals. So we break down your goals by quarter, and it looks like this year you are just totally crushing your goals. And we also show you, as you see, if I hover over it, it shows me the numbers that go with, with everything that's on this chart. What's kind of nice is I can just click on this bar and drill into it by department. So it's showing me goal versus actual by the departments we set up, and we're crushing it in the fuel department. I'll just click on lubricants here for an example or hover over it and you'll see how we're doing in lubes. Still doing pretty well. If I click on that, we then break that down by what we call product category. This is just an optional level. Um, and it looks like in this particular example, we're using like our brands to, to capture this. So how am I doing on my Chevron brand, all my other brands and my private label? These could be anything you want really here. And I could drill into this and now it breaks it down by, by product segment. Goal versus actual. I could go a step further and it's going to show me all the sales folks who are helping to get my lubricant, Chevron, antifreeze business. I could go one step further and it would just show all the accounts that are helping, in this case, Steve hit his lubricant, Chevron, antifreeze goal. So this is my best customer down to my worst customer uh, helping out with my antifreeze gross per, uh, volume. I'm sorry, volume. All right, so that's one way to look at the data. Another way, if I'm a sales manager, maybe I'd like to spin this data by, by salesperson. So I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, but it's kind of the same concept, except you start out at the salesperson level and then start drilling into it. And then each sales rep would have access just to their own dashboard. So each sales rep, you know, if you set goals, right, I can check to see every day, because invoice data is gonna be coming into the system every night, so I can see how I'm doing goal versus actual. 
And there's more than just these charts. There are lots of different reports you can run that uh, help you show goal versus actual. All right, the last thing I want to show here, once you set goals and you've got some history here, you've got some actual, and you've used your opportunity, your pipeline management long enough, now we've got a lot of information where we can help tell you or help you understand where you're at with hitting your goals. So we can analyze things like looking back, like what's your average deal size, your or opportunity size? What's your uh, average win rate? So if you do a really good job of pipeline management and you set goals, boy, it gets to be three, four, five months into the year, you can really start seeing how close are we to hitting our goals. So I'm not going to have a lot of time to go into how you set all this up, but it's pretty simple. You just tell the system what gap to goal analysis you want to do every night, or you can do it every week if you don't need it every night. And I actually have some pretty good data from a couple months ago, so I'm gonna apologize here. I'm gonna scroll down to some numbers that might be a little bit more realistic. So I gotta go all the way back to February. I know I had some pretty good data out there from February. Um, so bear with me. Oh, I gotta go back to the next page here. So on February 13th, I think it was, I told the system, look, I really wanna analyze just my whole lubricants department. So I'm going to look for the 13th, and I'm going to look for lubricants. But you can see I can analyze just how a, a person is doing on hitting their goal. I can look at how a person is doing within a department. So I have lots of different ways I, I can decide how I want the system to basically scrunch the numbers each night. So I'm going to do this really, really quick. But what this is telling me is how is my lubricant department doing uh, as far as hitting their goal? So really, really quick, here's how much volume I've done so far this year. Here's my average for the last 12 months. So based on how many days that are left in the year, here's what I think I'm gonna get the rest of the year. I've also told the system, I think I'm gonna have about a 3% growth this year. So I just bumped that number by 3%. I look at what we have in open opportunities based on that prorated number. So I'm looking at when are they gonna close the deal? Um, how many months are left in the year based on that? And I can add up all the information in my pipeline and tell you what's in my pipeline. Now, wait a minute. We only win 24% of our lubricant opportunities. So there's really, I, I can only really count on about 63,000 of those gallons coming in. So if my goal is 359,000 and I'm projected to get um, 203,000 based on all the numbers above, my gap is about 155,000, so I've only achieved about 56% of my goal based on the data. That's what I think I'm gonna hit. So I look at my gap based on uh, a, a prorated gap, based on how many months are left in the year, uh, based on my win rate, um, how many gallons do I really need to put in there, and then based on my average deal size, here's how many more lubricant opportunities I need to get in the system to hit my goal. We do the same calculations based on gross profit. And from a gross profit perspective, I need a whole lot more opportunities to hit my goal. So just imagine if you had this tool available to you to coach one of your salespeople, for them to have it in front of them, just to know. Um, so you don't have to look at all the data and figure this out. Um, you can just tell the system to do it every night. Okay. That's a lot on goal versus actual. I see I'm really, I've got about five minutes here. I am gonna fly here. I talked about notes earlier, so I'm not gonna cover notes, um, but I just wanna also mention that the system does have activities. Activities are really powerful. I could open up any customer I want. I could open up a lead or an opportunity, and you can create activities. Activities are just a great way to keep track of stuff that you need to do in the future, or, keep track of things that you've done. So you went to visit a customer, um, you had a good meeting with them, you just go in here and you can record that you had that call with them or that sales call with them and what happened and you save it, mark it complete and you're done with it. So it's again, this is kind of one of those competitor share a wallet deals again, where it's maybe not a value right now, but it's a value later, right? Uh, if you gotta look up what's been going on with this customer. So the way you do that is you hit this little plus sign. I could create any number of, of uh, activities Probably the most popular is just to make a task. I can fill in 
what I need to do for this customer, maybe six months from now or a year from now, or reach out to them again, give it a due date, or if I'm done with it already, I could mark it complete. So it's really a nice to-do list, but it's tied to the customer or tied to the opportunity. And then it, it's got you know somebody who's responsible and it has a due date. And when it comes due, it'll let you know you've got to work on this. So great, great, great reminder system. Again, let's keep everything about the customer in one spot. Another thing I promised to show you was equipment tracking, kind of a nice feature. We already have your customers, so one of the things that we're missing is all your equipment. So you go in and you, you just define all of your tanks, basically, if they're tanks or any other equipment you want to keep track of. So once you have that, then you go in and you just tie that to a customer. So I'll just highlight one here to point one out. So in this example, Fairview Manufacturing has this 200-gallon tank. We loaned it to them in February. Um, and there's no end date, so the thought here is they still have that. The other thing that's kind of nice, uh, if you want to get a little crazy with this, if it is a tank, you can say that they, hey, they promised to buy this product, and they promised to buy 500 gallons a year. Now we have enough information. There's a dashboard you can look at to say who's not meeting their commitment. So that's kind of nice. The other thing that's kind of nice is if I if I click on the tank here, I can see a history of this tank. So here's all the information about this tank, and here's basically where this tank has been. So I loaned it to this customer for a couple months or a month. I rented it to this customer, and now it's at Fairview Manufacturing. If I'm looking at Fairview Manufacturing, as we've done many times in the last hour, guess what? This little last arrow is going to let me look at the, uh, where are you, the account equipment. So this is going to give me a list of all the equipment this customer has or has had. Um, so here we go. It looks like they've had some equipment, but they've returned it or we went and got it, but they still have this one, this one tank. So that's equipment tracking. Um, fuel price notification, another feature that we have. What you can do is you can set up customers to get notified of your fuel prices. So in this case, Fairview, I want them to know what our super no lead and our unleaded price is every day. So every day I enter a base price, and in the case of Fairview, I go out and I, and I add 12 cents to my super no lead base price and six cents to my unleaded base price, and I formulate an email, and I send it to whichever contacts I've coded to get the email. So you enter a, enter a base price every day for each of your products, hit the go button, and it goes out and analyzes all this information across all your accounts to see if they want to get an email or not. And it blasts a bunch of emails. So that's kind of nice. Um, territory management, one other dashboard to help you plot things on a map. Uh, a lot of different uses for this. I'll just kind of rattle off one example. It's another dashboard. I'm just going to go into the famous territory management dashboard. There's a there's a few features here. Um, you can you can pick an account if you want. I'll just pick an address. That's one of the options here. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put in an address. So let's say I'm going to be up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I could put in a very specific address or just a city state. Basically, what I'm saying is show me all my accounts and leads that are within 20 miles of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Then I can kind of hide these controls so I get a little bit more real estate. So here's Green Bay, Wisconsin, just to kind of back up a little bit geographically, you'll see that, yep, that's, that's Green Bay, Wisconsin. And these are some accounts and leads that are near Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I could show you um, the colors mean something. So green are my customers, uh, red are my prospects, black is anything that's other than a prospect or an account. And then if there was any blue circles, they would be uh, my leads. And I can hover over these circles and I can click on them and it will show me who that account is. And if I wanted to, I could even click on view that record and guess what? It pulls up that account screen. And I could look at their order history. I could look at the contact information. I could look at all kinds of stuff uh, and make a decision on if I want to go visit that customer or not. So pretty nice tool, um, especially for new folks, folks who aren't used to their book of business. Uh, so they're new or they're especially if they're new to your uh, territory, your geographical area. Okay, last thing. Whew. Uh, retail fuels, that, that uh, new product that we've been working on, I just wanted to show you that. This is for those folks who are in the retail fuels business, so either they're uh, 
they're a jobber for you know a lot of the big brands and they're uh they've got a lot of stations to worry about or they own their own chain of stations there's a lot of configuration setup you can do ultimately you ended up defining your sites and then and then your sites are coded to a region a territory all kinds of different information about each of your sites so then you can do analysis based on a region or based on an ownership type or based on a brand um, so I'll just quickly pull up a site just to show you so again don't think of this as a customer think of it more as a station or a site uh, and it looks like I might have picked one I thought I had one with a picture here let me just go back once I thought I had thought I had a better one let's try this one once all right, so you can have activities and notes tied to a site. You can pull in a picture if you want to have a picture of it. Again, you, you code each of your sites to all of these different you know, areas to make reporting good. As I scroll down, you can have uh, keep track of the equipment that's at each site. Um, if they're under some type of an improvement plan and you want to keep track of some capability areas you want them to improve and maybe some, some levers you want them to move in a different direction, right? you can kind of set set a plan for the year and then keep track of who's responsible and what's gone well and you know what do you need to you know support this endeavor um, if you if you have programs set up for your stations maybe customer first or walk the store or so I guess any program you want and then you can record scores against that and we'll keep track of uh, the most recent score here and then you can kind of go down and you can do some analysis. I think uh, I might have to go back a little bit here in time, see if I have any data out here to populate. I thought I had something out here, maybe not for this customer. But the, oh, there it is. So this would just kind of show you trending on how they're doing on their program scores. There's lots of other stuff in this retail fuels module. I just wanted to kind of give you a quick overview just to kind of let you know that that's it's actually another product of ours. So it's a, kind of like an add on. If you're into this, uh, line of business as well. It might be a, a an additional product you might want to purchase because it's bundled all together with one. All right. All that being said, I need to turn this over to Jean to wrap this thing up. So Jean, take over. All right. Well, thank you, Steve. Um, I know that was a lot of information to cover in just one hour. Uh, so please do visit our oil and gas page on our website for additional resources, including industry specific case studies, uh, short targeted videos on features of the CRM for oil and gas product and industry and product agnostic videos on topics like data migration, user adoption, mobile and implementations. And you may also reach us, uh, reach out to us directly if you have any additional questions or comments regarding our CRM for oil and gas product or the retail fuels module of that product as well. Or um, also reach out to myself if you have any questions regarding any of our business and technology consulting services. Thank you for your time today. And again, please feel free to share this with others in your organization and network.